Hi, everyone. Hello. I hope you all can hear me, right? Yeah. And I'm so humbled to be here. And I guess I'm the youngest speaker here. The other speakers, they are so great, amazing, and seniors. <laughs> OK. Yeah. And like, I'm a huge fan of the American Atheist. Uh, and a lot of you, you know me. While I was stuck in my home country, Bangladesh, uh, so it feels so special to meet with the American Atheist in person because I never thought I could, I mean, escape from my country and go back to school and study. And uh, it feels special that I got to see the, uh, the American atheist in person. Yeah, and I was beaten and thrown out of the house just for liking the American atheist page. So it means a lot, and I cannot believe that I'm here. So thank you so much. I am Zareen Feroz, and I'm an ex-Muslim, Bengali atheist, and an international student, and an asylum seeker in the US. I mean, most Americans, they, I mean, they don't know where my country is. And it's a small country, and it's a young country, and it still has a long way to go. Uh, yeah, so, so here is the map of my country, and it's the third largest Muslim majority country. OK. My, my my country and high school, they both are supposed to be secular, but they are anything but secular. The power and the influence of Islam is too strong in my country, and even in secular schools, you are supposed to say, Surah Fatiha in assembly, and then you, I mean, sing the national anthem of the country. And like Hindus, Christians, they all were forced to say Surah Fatiha as well. So that was kind of weird. Yeah, and, and my school wasn't all that secular. Yeah, and I used to come back from school at 2 p.m. and then my mom, she used to send me to Islamic classes to get my moral values. And I could not wear nail polish. I could not keep long nails or wear frock jeans or skirt, or I could not do anything because I had to attend Islamic classes every day. Uh, and yes, I am a born skeptic. Even as a child, I could not believe in Islam. But I used to believe in Allah, all merciful and kind Allah. Yeah, a sky daddy's there up there. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, and when I was around seven year old, my, my hujur, the imam, was teaching me about the battle of Badr, B-A-D-R, that Muhammad fought. And I was like, uh, everything is so backward in the scripture. And it's all man-made. And I said this on his face, on my teacher's face. And my hujur, he was very offended. And he started hitting me with a stick, with a ru ruler, a wooden stick. Yeah, so it was really bad. And then he complained to my mom. My mom, she dragged my hair, she pulled my hair, and she slapped me across the face. So I never liked Islamic schoolings at all because it's not a pleasant experience because I was never allowed to question anything. And they used to hit us if we used to question or ask questions. Yeah, so they used to hit us a lot. Here, I mean, in this country, you'd be arrested if you hit, I mean, if you hit kids like this. And as a, I mean, and as a punishment, I was asked to write Kalima Shahadat for more than 100 times, that there is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is his only messenger. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. So it was really bad. I had to write that 100 times because I doubted the existence of Allah. So it, it's, it's crazy. Uh, my journey from Islam to atheism, and I'm new in this country, and People, they ask me all the times that you come from a third world country, how come you are so liberal, pro-choice, pro-gay marriage, and you understand science, how life has evolved on earth, how do you, how do you know so much? So they're, they're like, I'm sorry, but they're, I mean, like, isn't a fixed uh, time in my life where I can pinpoint and say that, okay, on this day I became an atheist. No, there are several, I mean, incidents in my life that forced me to question Islam. So let's see them, let's explore them. Okay, the first, uh, my, Father, he's highly educated, but still he was very short-tempered and abusive. Uh, and my father, he never wanted to pay for my expenses, the basic monthly expenses and for my education. My, and my mom and me, we both were, I mean, I mean, abused all day and night. And my father, he threatened to pull me out of school even when I was a child. And my head, it was dipped like under a large, I mean, bucket and and like at the time, I was only around 11 years old. Yeah, and, and all these abuses really made me question my culture because nobody came to save me or my mom. The 
neighbors, they saw my father beating us, screaming, shouting. Yeah, but nobody came to save us. My cousins, my friends, nobody. Nobody came to save us. And all these abuses, I mean, made me very shaky. And I, and I had a, and I do have a speech impediment as well. And in 2010, my father, he threw me across the room. And, and I had a head injury. I still get hurt if I brush my hair. And I have lost my hair after the surgery and after the stitches. And I was rushed to CSCR hospital in Chittagong. And my parents, they just lied to the doctor how I got hurt. Yeah. And so, and my speech impediment, it became worse after my head injury and after my surgery. Yeah. <clears throat> I was also, I mean, forced to drop out of school only, I mean, I was in class eight. I was, I mean, a high school student just in class eight. And the, the educations, I mean, the system of my country, it's horrible. The, the schools in my country, they don't take classes. You have to attend SCAM coaching center just to pass your high school board exam. The, the O level, A level, the, like the SSC or the HSC exam. And that was just, uh, and the coaching centers are really expensive. So, and this one, I mean, the biggest, I mean, I am not brave at all. The only, I mean, I mean, I dared to speak out against Islam and against child marriage because my own education was at stake. And I do not want to leave if I cannot study, if I cannot go to school. Twenty thirteen and fourteen was a turning point in my life. I was already out of school and I was a high school dropout and and YouTube was banned in my country and in and in several other Muslim countries in 2013. Can anyone say why the YouTube was banned? Nobody? It's a rhetoric question. I mean, don't worry, like I won't behead you if your answer is wrong. <laughs> okay, it was banned because of a silly clip called the innocence of Muslims. It was very silly. And that affected me a lot. Why? Because I mean, I was like already a high school dropout and, uh, and I was trying to study at home by watching, I mean, the clips on the internet and the YouTube, it was banned in my country. I could not check the calculus, the math tutorials, the chemistry. Yeah, so I was very upset. And I logged into Facebook and 
uh, I saw all my Muslim friends, cousins, they all were like, we will not use YouTube. How dare you insult Islam? Zarin, you should report all the anti-Islam pages. So that was the first time I came across anti-Islam pages. Uh, and like at first I did cringe. I was like, okay, why are you insulting somebody's faith? Yeah, because as a child I was brainwashed to, like my mom, she always taught me to respect like everyone's faith. You are not supposed to insult anybody's faith. Yeah, so like at first I did cringe a bit and I have messaged the admins like of those anti-Islam or anti-Islam pages. And I was thoroughly bashed by Atheist Online, verbally bashed by Atheist Online. They have pointed out all the bad verses, all the sexist, I mean, slavery, genocide, all the bad verses in Quran. And I was like, okay. And they had good points, good, I mean, arguments. So I was like, okay, I need to question my faith. I need to recheck everything. So I went back to read the Holy Quran again. And, uh, and oh my God, on that day, I was really shocked to see all the bad verses in Quran. And I was like, the atheists were actually right. These things are not true. Oh my goodness. And I just said so many, I kept on giving stupid excuses. Yeah, and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so bad. And, uh, uh, and I became an atheist after reading the Quran. <laughs> and a ting a light bulb moment. It was a light bulb thing that okay, if the scriptures are so backward and man made, then the gods of the scripture cannot actually exist. These gods, they do not exist. And I have always loved science as well. So I knew how life has evolved on Earth. And science, it does explain how life has formed without any silly god. I mean, why would you want the scripture god to exist? They are so horrible. Yeah. So I became an atheist after reading the Quran. And there were like other incidents. I mean, the I mean the atheists in my country they were being hacked to death, and that caught my attention. And I was like, I'm also an atheist. Oh my god, yeah. But I did not know. But I was just a kid at the time. Like I'm still young. I mean, yeah. But. Back then, I had no clue what is blasphemy and that you could be killed for saying, or I could be killed for saying something on my Facebook page. I did not know that. So, I mean, like in a way, I was, I mean, too, I mean, too small to understand what is blasphemy because I, I mean, the shame and the stigma of being an atheist runs deep. And atheists were killed in my country. There were like around 35 like attacks in my country, like just in the last four years, till 2016. The number, I mean, it's uh, like it's an approximation. And uh, oh my God, I mean, 
and like even the Hindu Christian preachers, they were also attacked in my country. Yeah, and I was also an atheist at that time, while all these atheists were killed in my country. And we badly need your help and support. And Hefa Jati Islami, they are, I mean, they are from my hometown. They have marched, I mean, across the capital, Dhaka, and like, like I hope, I mean, you all can see the crowd, and it's not a fringe group. It's not a fringe group in my country. I mean, just, I mean, ask any random, I mean, person in Bangladesh, uh, I mean, they would say that, I mean, yes, atheists should be killed. How dare you not believe in Allah? You stupid atheist, how do you think we all were formed? How do you think life has formed? Yeah, so it's not a fringe group. Vast, I mean, vast majority of the Bengali Muslims, they do think that, I mean, atheists should be killed or they should at least be jailed for, I mean, blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And in, and here is my high school friend. She was forced to marry in 2014. And here, I mean, I had to blur the picture, but if you are my Facebook friend, you can see the whole, I mean, like album. You can see the whole album on my Facebook page. Hmm. So my mom, she was also my mom, my aunt, my maids, they all were like, you cannot study, you are a girl, what will you do by studying? Yeah, so all your friends are practicing hijab and they are married, they are high school dropouts. You, I mean, you should also get married. And I was like, no, I'm not getting married, I want to study. Mm. And child marriage is, I mean, it's so common in my country, Bangladesh. It's, I mean, like even the, like the upscale town, like even in Dhaka, Chittagong, I mean, rich kids are married off from good, like, like the English speaking schools. Yeah, so it's very common in my country, child marriage, and my country ranks fifth in child marriage. Like as you can see, it's the Google search result. And yes, you can get, I mean, arrested in my country just for a Facebook post. I don't have a blog. I am not a blogger. And it's so common where, I mean, crowds of mob, they would attack you just for, I mean, saying something on your personal Facebook page. Or like if you're slightly or wrongly like accused of blasphemy, then you are finished. There were several cases where, I mean, Hindus, Buddhists, they were attacked, their homes, properties, they were, I mean, robbed. 
because somebody falsely accused them of blasphemy. So it's a serious crime in my country. And like on the, I mean the Maja laws, it's a page for youngsters in my country and the admin of that page was arrested just for a meme, I mean, come on. And like, and I mean, on the other side, you can see that two people, they got arrested just for a Facebook status. Facebook, WhatsApp, and like several other apps, Viber, they were banned in Bangladesh several times. I mean, can you, I mean, can you, I mean, like imagine not having your cell phone or not have, I mean, you guys would lose your shit. I mean, if you don't have Facebook, <laughs> yeah. And my country, and I have seen my country changing from bad to worse. And it became more Islamic with time. And my high school friends, they all started practicing hijab, like hijab with a face full of makeup. It makes no sense to me. Why would you wear red lipstick on top of hijab? And Boys and girls were separated. Boys on one side, girls on the other side in Muslim parties, I mean, weddings. And I just could not take all that. So all that made me really challenge the norm, the, the status quo. And I was also asked not to enjoy the Bengali New Year because I would be a, I would be a Hindu if I do that. So South Asian culture, it's very rich, diverse, but, but everything was being moved away for the sake of Islam. And yes, thank you internet for making me an atheist. I mean, internet has opened. <laughs> the internet has opened the whole new world for me. I, and by 2014, I have started speaking against child marriage, blasphemy law, and my country is supposed to be a secular country. Bangladesh is supposed to be a secular country, not an Islamic country. And I got the courage to speak because my education was at stake. And I have started, I mean, getting threats online. You can see the screenshots, all the loves that I get from the Islamic groups. Like on one hand, you can see, I mean, it's like Islamic chhatra, I mean, shibir. They are the student wing of the Jamati Islami party of my country is the largest group in my country. And here, I mean, fuck you, bitch, as you can see. I mean, I, mean, I get this all the time. And, and as I'm a female atheist, I mean, mostly I do get rape threats a lot. 
And this message from the Ansar al Islam, they have left a dead note for me. The Ansar al Islam, they are the Al Qaeda branch of group in South Asia, branch or group in South Asia. So this kind of changed my life, my my mom, dad, they have also started receiving complaints that your daughter is an evil atheist. Yeah, so my parents, they have thrown me outside the house and I sat on the staircase and I cried. My neighbors, they never came to help me. Nobody came to help me. And my classmates, my co, workers, I mean, I used to teach, I mean, young kids in my home country, but I had to quit my job as well. I could not leave the house. And nobody is there to help. The government of my country, they have said that, I mean, if you write something and if you get killed, then it's your fault. We will not protect, I mean, atheists. And like, atheists should not talk about Islam or question Islam. This is Sheikh Hasina, and she, I mean, she has no clue about secular laws, free speech, human rights, uh, I'm like, I mean, I am ashamed of her. Police in my country, even they have said that they will not help it, I mean, atheists, so I could not, I mean, show all those threats to, I mean, the, I mean, the police in my country. My UK friend, Sarah, she has set up a GoFundMe account for me, and many of my American friends, they have donated and helped. Thank you all so much. It means a lot. And, uh, but I could not raise much fund. It was only around, I mean, 1,000 plus pound. And the UK and the Swedish embassy, they have also said no to me. And Brexit just happened after that. So I came in this country during a very bad time. And the reasons that they gave was very silly. That you are single, you are unmarried, you don't have kids or husbands, so you lack ties to your home country. Or you don't have your own bank statement, so you lack ties to your country and you cannot leave the country. Finally, the U.S. Embassy, they have accepted me. And last year, I was... <clears throat> and here is my U.S. visa. I came here legally in this country. And it took me two years to process my U.S. visa. And Trump, he kept on saying last year that ban all Muslims. And I'm like, hello, I am here. I'm an atheist from a Muslim majority country. Um, yeah. And it's difficult to help ex-Muslims because you cannot leave the country without a male guardian. And, and you cannot, I mean, publicize your story 
because you you may not get visa like if they know like if the i mean embassy if they find out that you are an atheist and trying to leave the country my life here in the us i got a new life i never thought i could go back to school i got to wear skirt for the first time after coming in the us i have used bus train late at night for the first time without any male guardian i went out alone i tried bacon i still have to try <laughs> And I'm, I mean, learning how to drive and swim. And I have started a skeptic club on my campus. My school is really Christian. It's a small school. Yeah, yeah. And Bengali atheists, now we are growing in numbers. We have more than 26,000. Members, twenty-six plus thousand. Yeah. While I was stuck in my country, Reza Aslan he kept on saying that Bangladesh is a moderate Muslim country where girls, boys are hundred percent equal. That's not true at all. Child. Marriage, it's so common in my country. And bloggers, they get, I mean, jailed. So how is it moderate? It's just, I mean, they, I mean, they get jailed just like in Saudi Arabia. And I got scholarship from the American atheist and And also from my school, so that's how I'm paying. And I and I also came here with limited funding from my, I mean, country. My mom, dad, they, I mean, eventually they had to let go of me. And but they are still not ready to accept me, and they cannot keep an outspoken atheist in their house. So it's very bad that I lost everything, my parents, my country, er I mean everything. And I have filed for, for asylum. I still cringe to say that I'm a refugee. I mean, who thinks that you would be a refugee? You cannot stay in your own country. Uh, so, and I cannot work until 150 days, so that's a lot. I mean, it's like almost like six months. And, uh, and it will take me three years to hear back from the US government. That's insane. I mean, how would I live for the next three years? So here, I need your help and support to pressurize the US government to speed up my case. Five lawyers, they have looked into my case and they have said that yes, you have a credible, I mean, fear to seek asylum. Yeah, and they have filed my case on 3rd August, this August. And I'm and I love science, I am passionate about science, and I hope to start my own YouTube channel and podcast so you all can support me, and please keep in touch. Well, I'm new in this country, and I need more friends here, like-minded friends. And thank you so much, thank you, the I mean, American atheist, David Silverman, thank you all so much.